Hey everyone, so I'm excited for this one. We recently did a geography in Oslo, Norway, and I had the honor to meet many of you guys, the Norwegian geography peeps, in your own country. It was amazing. Norway is a country everyone has kind of heard about, something about snow, ice, Vikings, skiing, I think trolls, but Norway is also a land of highly compounded history, tradition, postmodernism, and above all, landscape and people. And black metal. Yes, Keith is really excited for this episode. It's time to learn geography. No! Hey everyone, I'm your host Barbs. We've done Denmark, Finland, Iceland, and now the fourth Nordic sister, Norway. Now in the Nordic countries, Norway would kind of be like the one that everyone either tries to call their best friend or date. She smiles at the ground, pulls her hair behind her ear, and looks up with those sky blue doe eyes that sparkle and says, Welcome to Norway! Norway plays a huge role in what it means to be Northern European. And when you look at it on the map, you'll see that it's fascinating how well they've developed the civil infrastructure from a rugged half-frozen peninsula. Oh, and <laughs> there's a town called Hell. First of all, the country, which kind of looks like the shape of a spoon, is located in Northern Europe in the region known as Scandinavia, just above the North Sea, bordering mostly Sweden to the east, Finland in the far north, and even a small sliver of Russia at the very end. This effectively means that Norway goes even further east than Finland and gets the entire Arctic coast from their neighbor neighbors sharing the Barents Sea with Russia. Apart from that, Norway has some overseas territories as well, two of which are in the Arctic Circle, the Svalbard Archipelago with only about 3,000 people, mostly in the largest town Longyearbyen, and the uninhabited Jan Mayen Island, which was actually kind of traded with the UK for these islands in Canada in like 1930 when Canada was still British. Weird trade-off, but okay. After that, they have two dependent territories, the Antarctic areas of Peter I Island and Bouvet Island, way down south, neither of which are permanently inhabited and they also claim a portion of Antarctica known as Queen Maud Land. Going back to the mainland though, the country is currently, as of 2019, divided into 17 counties, or Fulker, plus the unincorporated area of Svalbard, which, by the way, holds the northernmost permanently inhabited settlement in the world, with a population around 40 in the winter and 120 in the summer. The thing is, in 2020, the country will merge some of these counties into 11 regions. Already, North and South Trondelag have merged, and the final result in 2020 will look like this. The country's largest city and capital is all Oslo, located in the southeast, which also holds the largest airport, Oslo Lufthavn International, as well as Oslo's shipping port, the busiest shipping port in the country. A skip to the west, you find the second largest city, Bergen, with of course the second largest airport, Bergen International. It is said that almost around 80% of the country lives within 10 kilometers of the ocean, and despite the rugged mountainous terrain, the nation has an extensive network of roads, bridges, and trains that cross virtually every region of the nation, including the Laerdal Tunnel, the world's longest road tunnel that stretches 24 kilometers long, cutting through a mountain, and also the famous Atlantic Road that hops from island to island in the Mura Romsdal County. Now what's really fascinating is that Norway kind of went from this to this, and for a nation that has never surpassed five and a half million in population, it's pretty impressive. How did this happen though? Well, as the legend goes, in the 60s, Denmark was like, Hey Norway, you are just the best. I love you man, and you know, just to prove it, I'm gonna give you all this ocean water stuff. Wow, really? Yeah, 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 yeah. just take it. Thanks. Whoa, there's like a ton of oil here. Thanks, Denmark. Actually, it was the Geneva Convention like 10 years prior to that, but that story's kind of boring. Now, as you can clearly tell, Norway has lots of access to the ocean. Due to all the serrated inlets and fjords, plus islands, they have the seventh largest coastline in the world. This also means that roads and bridges can only take you so far, and in order to get around the Norway's west coast, you'll see a lot, and I mean a lot, of ferries and ships. And what's cool is that, like some other neighbors, Norway has a free roaming law, in which you can pretty much camp out anywhere in nature as long as it is not on private property. We all know some towns in Norway are situated in the most picturesque locations. Some like this town have no direct sunlight for six months because of the mountains, so they built giant mirrors to illuminate them. Fun fact, Longyearbyen is known for being both the brightest and darkest place on earth. Because of its location on the Arctic Circle, it gets 110 continuous days of no sunshine and 95 days of no night. Also, they have an emergency seed bank with over a million specimens built into the side of a mountain in case of the apocalypse and all plant life dies out on earth. Also, technically, it's illegal to die in Svalbard. Because of the permafrost, bodies do not decompose, so you must either ship out your body or cremate it. Not sure how to segue out of that, but let's talk about cool places. Now I asked some of you guys in Norwegian geography peeps what some of the top places to visit in Norway are, and here are some of the suggestions you gave. Nordkap, the Viking Ship Museum, Nidaros Cathedral, the Dock of Bergen, the King's Castle, Alta's Igloo Hotel, Frogner Park, and Vigeland Sculpture Park. Try to find the one with the dude fighting the babies. This fortress, this Iron Age farm, the world's largest moose 
sculpture, this whaling museum, the Roald Amundsen and Edward Munch monuments and grave, the Kontiki Museum, the Polaria Aquarium, the Eger Viking style brewery, the Three Swords Monument, so many traditional stave churches, but this one is probably the most famous one. I mean, there's like a billion rocks named after body parts of trolls. There's that weird boulder jammed between two cliffs, a mountain with a hole in it so it looks like it got shot by a gun, so many ice caves, the world's strongest whirlpool, so many fjords like Geiranger Fjord, North Fjord, Hardanger Fjord, Troll Fjord, Harrison Fjord. They were even supposed to give Finland the peak of Mount Halti for their 100th birthday, but then it was kind of like, Happy 100th birthday, Finland! Thanks, Norway. So I heard that you're thinking of finally giving me the peak to my tallest mountain, right? Oh, oh yeah, sure, why not? Awesome. Well, then, uh, let me have it. Oh, see, there's this thing in my constitution called Article 1, which states that the Kingdom of Norway is indivisible, so here's a taco. Yeah, Norwegians actually really love tacos, which makes the perfect opportunity to transition into... Now, if you know anything about Norway's land, you'll know this one word. Fjords. 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 The word is even Norwegian. And it's interesting how it became that way. Basically, like many other areas in the north, the country is a post-glacial peninsula with over 50,000 islands that at one point was completely covered in ice. Over time, the ice melted, eroding the rock beneath, creating the incredibly indented coastline of steep, jagged cliffs and fjords. Of the coast, the largest and deepest fjord is Sogne Fjord, and it is the third largest in the world, extending over 200 kilometers inland. This means that much of the country is divided into regions of choppy fjord stuff to the west and the connected hilly and valley stuff to the south and southeast. Everything pretty much falls either within the alpine boreal climate or further up north, arctic. Keep in mind that due to Svalbard and Jan Mayen, the Norwegian economic zone extends to the majority of the Norwegian Sea and much of the Barents, as well as the North Sea to the south. This is called the NCS or Norwegian Continental Shelf. Here the largest deposit of underwater oil is found that supplies Norway with much of its wealth. A skip to the east you find the largest lake, Lake Musa, which is just parallel to the longest river in the country, the Glama, which drains all the way into the North Sea in the south and has a drainage basin that covers about 13% of the country's land. A little skip to the west in the center, you find the longest and most dominant mountain chain, the Scandinavian Mountains, where you can find the tallest peak, Galdhupigen, which is also the tallest in all of the Nordics. If we are discussing the overseas territories, then Svalbard is pretty much an Arctic archipelago of glaciers, this one being the largest in all of Europe, and the rest are mostly just cold valleys. Jan Mayen Island is the only place with an active volcano in Norway, the Berenberg Peak last erupted in 1980. Otherwise, if we skip all the way south to the Antarctic, Bouvet and Peter I Islands are dormant volcanic islands, Bouvet considered the most remote island in the world, and both of which are nearly completely covered in ice and only inhabited by seals and birds. Now, keep in mind about the oil thing though, although they export lots of it, gas is actually still super expensive. According to globalpetrolprices.com, as of 2019, it is just over 17.2 krone per liter, making it one of the most expensive places to get gas in the world. I don't want to talk about it. This is partially because in 1990, they initiated the Government Pension Fund Global. This is a national wealth fund run by the government to subsidize pensions when oil dependence runs dry. Now, Norway has lots of natural resources and clever ways of managing them, making them somewhat of a paragon for development few other nations can compare with. Challenge accepted. But for what it's worth, they have a unique system locked and loaded. And now it is time for my triple shot of espresso break. Usually this is the part where Noah comes in, but Noah is out of town. So let's give this to Keith. <laughs> Now, everyone knows that Norway is quite a prosperous nation, but just how prosperous is it? Let's just put it this way. They export more than they import and not just petroleum products. Fish alone makes up about 10% of their exports and they are the highest exporter of salmon out of any other country in the world. I just love Voss water. It's expensive and it's Norwegian, so you know it probably came from like a mystical glacier or something. Yeah, no, that's basically just our tap water. I wash my dishes with that stuff every Every day. But it's expensive and Norwegian. And you fell for it. <laughs> Ha! Y'all just got tricked. Otherwise, the majority of the energy in Norway comes from hydroelectric power. Norway became one of the first countries to adopt a carbon tax back in 1991. Although cutting down trees is still done on a smaller scale, they were the first country to ban deforestation. They have Europe's largest herd of reindeer. They have lots of birds like puffins, whales, and orcas love swimming off the coast. In the Arctic, you can find polar bears and walruses. 
And now, food. Norwegian food is known for being either really nice, warm, and cozy, or straight up disgusting. They love their fish. You have some interesting fish dishes like lutefisk and rockfisk. Some other dishes include things like various types of porridge, pickled herring, kumla, reindeer made in various ways, meatballs and brown sauce, krumkaka, brown cheese, these Christmas dishes, and the national dish, fotokal. However, if you ask a Norwegian, they might tell you the new national dish of Norway is tacos. They might have some questionable ingredients on the table for you to add like mayonnaise or cucumbers. And I mean, come on, Mexico, even you break your own rules all the time and mix things up in your own country. So let the Norwegians have their fun. And speaking of Norwegians, have fun. Oh, and speaking of Norwegians having fun. Oh, and speaking of Norwegians having fun. Thank you, Keith. Norwegians have a saying, they are born with skis. The word even comes from the ancient Norse word skith, which means split wood. If there was any kind of apex cold winter type of people on earth, Norwegians would take the gold. And they literally do take the gold. Like they have more Winter Olympics gold medals than any other country. First of all, the country has about 5.3 million people and as of 2018 has the highest human development index out of any country in the world. At about 84%, the country is made up primarily of people that identify as ethnically Norwegian, including about 60,000 indigenous Sami people. About 8.3% of the population is other European descent, mostly Western Europe, and the remaining population is made up of other people groups from outside of Europe, from various regions of Africa, Asia, mostly from countries like Pakistan, Somalia, Morocco, Iraq, and Kurdish people. They use the Norwegian krone as their currency, they use the types C and F plug outlets, and they drive on the right side of the road. Interesting to note that they are not part of the EU, but part of the European Economic Area and Free Trade Association. In fact, Norway is a kingdom, currently under the headship of King Harald V. However, his role is mostly representative and ceremonial, his executive powers are limited, and most government is ruled by the parliament. Essentially though, although some would argue Vikings kind of started in Denmark, it really kicked off in Norway. Norwegian Vikings did kind of all the exploring and colonizing and raiding and killing, you know, Viking stuff. And no, they did not wear helmets with horns. Language-wise, Norway actually has two official languages, Norwegian and Sami, the language of the minority northern indigenous peoples that have lived in the frigid regions for millennia. The Norwegian language, however, is kind of confusing though, because it kind of has two different writing systems that everybody must learn in school, Nunorsk and Bokmol. What exactly are they? Well, it kind of goes like this. Hey, we've been in a union with the Danish for centuries and now they are gone. We can speak our own language freely. Woohoo! But we've been writing our language in the Danish style for so long. I mean, what do we do? Do we change it? Hi, I'm Evo Olsen and I say yes. I'm going to listen to all the dialects of Norwegian and come up with a weird fusion thing that can work for everyone. I'll call it Nunorsk. We can teach it in schools and everyone can be free of Danish influence. Uh today the Danish style book mall is still used by about 85% of the population. Weird side note, the word ha can mean almost anything in Norway. For example, ha. Ha? Ha. Ha. Speaking of which, like many of their other neighbors, Norwegians have 13 years of school, graduating at age 19. And when Norwegians are just about ready to take their final exams, they go on a three-week party called Rus. And eh, just look it up. Norway has lots of different dialects. Here are some of you guys, the Norwegian geography peeps, explaining. <laughs> Hey, my name is Talina. In standard Norwegian, you might say Vores, but in Egersund area, you say Okas. In the west, you could say Gisnaleira. And in the north, maybe Kurarti. In Oslo, you would say something along the lines of Det er ikke lett, skjønner du? The Trøndelag County, det er ikke lett, skjø. So in standard Norwegian, you would say Søppel. But in Bergen, we say boss. Thank you. Otherwise, there are so many other things you guys, the Norwegian geography peeps, wanted us to talk about in terms of your culture. And here is Random Hannah with Culture Stuff. <laughs> Norway is a land loaded with tradition and folklore. Many of you have already heard of things like trolls and elves, but there's also scary beings like the Holdra, Natmara, and the Nuken. Pretty much all Norwegians are outdoorsy people. Hiking and cross-country skiing are national pastimes hands down. Almost everyone owns some kind of Mari sweater, made of wool with traditional patterns knitted onto the upper parts, usually in the national colors of red, white, and blue. Many Norwegians own small cabins in the woods, and they actually like to brag about how 
bad their cabins can be. <laughs> As in how technologically disconnected they are, with the least amenities. No Wi-Fi, no electricity, no plumbing. You're hardcore. Speaking of bragging, in Norway it's considered super cool to come back from vacation and show off your tan. Because it's kinda hard to get a tan in Norway. The Nobel Peace Prize is also awarded in Oslo every year. In Norway, everyone's income and wealth is on public record, mostly. But for what it's worth, the nation does this to help prevent tax evasion. And finally, we cannot skip the boonods. These are traditional costumes of Norway that come in so many different varieties based on the region and town you are from. They are mostly worn for special occasions, especially for May 17th, the country's national day where they march to the castle in Oslo. Yeah, 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 yeah. All right, get out of here. I want to talk about music. Traditionally, Norwegians have their own regional folk music and dance is called Bugdidans. Traditional instruments include things like dulcimers, goat horn, willow flute. The traditional folk music eventually found a way to fuse with one of the most popular genres of Norway today metal or specifically Norwegian folk metal bands not only that but black metal was started supposedly in Norway and it has since been a domineering genre many people have been playing for decades that's it for me Thank you again, Keith. Anyway, we gotta move on. History, in the quickest way I can put it, Viking Age. This dude unites Norway into one kingdom. Vikings invade and take over a ton of other places like England. Christianity, Old Kingdom, Black Plague, Union of Kalmar, Denmark takes over. Lutheranism, Sweden takes over. Constitution established, first wave of immigrants to America. They finally leave Sweden. World War I, neutral. Women's suffrage. World War II, neutral again, but Germany doesn't care. Joins NATO and European Free Trade Association. Oil boom, they vote and reject EU membership. Hosted Winter Olympics in Lille. Hammer, largest underwater gas pipeline in the world open, Oslo grows and more immigrants come in, and here we are today. I asked you Norwegian geography peeps for some notable people from Norway or of Norwegian descent, and here are some of the ones you suggested we put in this video. Eric the Red, so many past Vikings and Kings, blah blah blah, Edward Gregg, Edward Munch, these riders, these cross-country skiers, Roald Amundsen, Magnus Carlsen, Max Magnus, Tor Heyerdahl, Fritjof Nansen, so many musicians like these people, as well as actors like these people, and of course, the royal family. Seriously though, did you guys watch the movie Kontiki? It's pretty good. I mean, his migration theory was still kind of mostly wrong, but hey, you did a cool thing, man. And that's the thing about Norwegians. They're so globally intrepid. They reach out to the far corners, and with that, they've also made a lot of friends. Which brings us to... Now, Norwegians are known for being very level-headed and nice, but they do know who they support and stand by no matter what. First of all, Switzerland is kind of like their weird alternate parallel universe twin that shares a lot in common with them. They both are not part of the EU. They both are very financially stable, yet expensive to live in. They both have mountains and snow, and they both have similar values in general affairs. They get along pretty well and enjoy sharing the ski stories. The UK is a very close friend, especially Scotland due to their shared Viking history. They even give them a Christmas tree every year to say thanks for helping in World War to when their king and government were taken in from exile as the Germans tried to invade. Nepal has close ties. As another mountain nation, they've taken much interest and send much aid to their programs. High profile politicians have visited in the past, like their Minister of Environmental Development, Eric Solheim, and the Prime Minister of Nepal visited Norway as well. For the USA, they have a very close connection, not only in diplomacy, government, and business, but specifically to the diaspora living in the USA, and specifically the state of Minnesota. Nearly a million Norwegian Americans live in this one state alone. The USA holds more people of Norwegian heritage than any other country outside of Norway, with almost as many as there are in Norway. They even have a game show called Alt for Norge, in which Norwegian Americans see the homeland of their ancestors. They cry and act way too dramatic, which is entertaining. The winner gets to meet their Norwegian relatives, and the losers get a book telling them information, but they don't get to meet their relatives, which is kind of messed up, but it's a game show, what do you expect? Anyway, when it comes to their best friends, pretty much what I've heard is a mix between all the Nordics, but specifically Iceland, Denmark, and Sweden. Iceland is like their party friend they love to go on adventures with. They're also kind of like the preserved Norse nation that their ancestors colonized, which holds a dear spot in their hearts. Today, they have a defense agreement that allows the Norwegian Air Force to survey and patrol the Icelandic airspace as well. Denmark and Norway, however, are always kind of fighting for Norway's affection. Both these nations in the past have fought each other and ruled over Norway under separate kingdoms. All three countries were at one point part of the Kalmar Union. They can relatively understand each other when they talk. Swedish is closer to Norwegian though. They are all part of NATO, the Council of Europe, and many people from each of these nations end up marrying and having families together. In conclusion, Norway's prosperity doesn't stop with their will for gritty cold adventure. They've scaled the South Pole, the icebergs, the glaciers, and the tundras. It's almost as if the ice keeps them warm. Stay tuned, Oman is coming up next.